post-divorce finances. You know, men and women both worry about how they're going to make ends meet after divorce. My name is Laura Hearn, and I have been helping couples get divorced in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And I can tell you that there are both men and women who worry about this. Women oftentimes these days make less than men. And when the two income family now becomes a one income family, it's going to hurt both sides. But especially if one side is making less than the other to begin with, now they're going to have to survive on less than half. Plus all the assets that you've accumulated have been divided in half minus all the expenses of getting divorced and paying your attorney's fees, unfortunately. So now you have more debt, less assets, and less income. And men worry about how they're going to pay child support. So whether you're the one receiving child support or paying child support, it's a financial stressor for everybody. So here are some essential strategies for planning for a more secure financial future. Number one, make a budget. You're going to need to plan ahead and sit down, write down all of your normal monthly expenses. Then think about things that you just pay annually or every once in a while, like new tires for the car, registration and, and inspection on the car, your taxes maybe on your house that comes up once a year. and write down what one twelfth of that annual expense would be for each month so that you've planned ahead when that expense comes down the road. And then when you look at what your income is going to be versus your expenses, you're going to have to make some hard choices. You may have to cut your grocery budget or cut down on some of the things that you were hoping to have in that budget. You may have to cut cable TV or some other things out. But take heart, it, it won't be forever and life will get better. You know, you will get a raise eventually or a second job or a new job and your income will increase over time. It's just going to take a little time to get back on your feet financially. Second of all, think about future goals in terms of, of long term, your retirement, your kid's college education, maybe a new car, a new house, those things that are several years down the road and make a plan for putting aside some money for those things as you go. Maybe start out small now and increase it as time goes by. Maybe plan on increasing it next year or the year after that. Third, talk to a financial advisor. A lot of times the financial advisor can help put your mind at ease when they show you how your investments will grow over time. When they look at how much are you going to need at this point to retire, and it might not be as much as you think, and then how much time you have to get there, how much you're going to have to put aside each month now in order to get to that goal in light of investments that grow. And they can often show you a computer model and a graph that they can come up with fairly quickly to show you how it um, will all work out in the end. Our firm has several of such financial advisors that we can recommend if you don't already have one. And fourth and finally, make a new will and check the beneficiaries on your life insurance and your financial accounts because chances are somewhere in there you have named your spouse as a beneficiary and that's probably not what you want now that they're your ex-spouse. Especially even if you do want your spouse to continue to be the beneficiary of your will or your life insurance policy, you have to rename them because the law presumes that you don't want them after divorce, but it doesn't presume who you would want in their place. So you need to name somebody as beneficiary. Again, my name is Laura Hurd. I hope this has helped. Please like, share, and subscribe this video. Thank you.